you hear outside the rain is miserable again, it's a horrible grey day, it's going to be better in a couple of days, then I'll be able to go fishing again. So unless it's so miserable, I'm going to stay inside and start with a big abstract, I've got some ideas for this one, different to those we've done again, I'd like to try something different each time and explore. I'm also going to do a picture for a friend, uh, one of my uh, YouTube uh, subscribers, who was painting a moose abroad, but he seems to have a bit of a job getting the recession into the greens and so on, and the textures. I think he's using oils, but I think he might not have some time to do better with the acrylics in some ways because he's got more tools to his hand then. I mean, with oils, we can use different brushes, but it's hard to use things like sponges and so on, which we can use it easier with acrylics for textures. But we'll see. Uh, so I'm going to do a picture of a moose made up from various composite photographs again, as he's doing over there to help him on a piece of ordinary um, watercolour card, in fact, not being watercolour card. Um, which is not slightly more to damage, so I've got some actual uses up for this particular job. And I've been a fun just doing that for his benefit. Um, I just enjoy it anyway, it's a painting, and in this weather, what else can one do? So we'll start with the moose, and we'll finish with the abstract. So here's his painting of the moose that he wants me to help him with. He's a very capable artist, and in fact, he's coming over to see me next year in France and paint with me. Um, but I feel that uh, help with using different hues of greens would be useful to him, and even the warms, how we can get the warms going from warm to cooler warms, the greens from warmer greens to cooler greens in the distance. Just feel, and also having the greens throughout. At the moment um, I tend to find that a lot of times he makes blue sky, brown soil, green trees, separates things out too much and we don't get the overall light of the blues or greens coming one into another. Also I think you can do more with texture. If we're looking at this particular picture, one of the ones we're going to use over here and you can see here this painting and next to it one that he's been using for reference and there's so much more texture going on in here which he hasn't got in his painting at all now that's possibly because he's using oils and doesn't want to start using other bristle brushes or other textures and techniques to get the use of these different textures around the moose which will make a lot of difference to this and highlights as well of light and dark so I want to show how we can do that with acrylics and he could do it with the oils too if he's using different brushes or different textures and materials so in the meantime, my acrylics are getting a bit low, so I'll have to see how I can do with them. I um, might have to replace a lot of them in between. Let's get back onto the painting now and see what we can do. So I want to start off with the backgrounds here. I'm going to start, with, I'll start off with the cooler colours. You can mainly feel that sort of, and I expect I'll get away with sort of three brushes here on most of it anyway, because I'm doing fairly fine work. There's a number six, a number four, and a zero. Should be plenty for this one. Also, just over here, I'll bring it back over this way a bit so that I can reach it straight from there to the palette. So let's have a look first straight away at this distance and work from these colours that are way down here below in this lovely river scene here. We've got reflections of the trees and things want to be much cooler here than over here. So if I straight away just make a series of different greens that go from cool to warm. Now turquoise is already a green, a blue green. So let's just look at that immediately as a cool green going on way down below here. Now that's a fairly cool green, and another cooler green, although it's going warmer, is going to be this blue, which is the uh, ultramarine. I'm going to put a bit of that down there just to show you how it can go. And I want to soften that down with the with a bit of the turquoise here. So this is going to give us this lovely distant colour. There's some slightly warmer colours amongst that. Now if we go from that to a warmer green still, we've got just slightly more as we come up here. And through here, through the light, as it comes closer to us, we've got a tree coming up through here, which gets warmer. Then I'm going to put a bit more uh, warm yellow with that. I'll put a little bit of chrome yellow with that. And look how that gets warmer up here. And then up here, warmer still. And we start to get towards a brown green. That's this one, which is more of a sap green. And you see how we go from the cools through to the warmer colours in the greens alone. Now that's just one quick example of a way we can go through the colour hues of warmer, cooler, cooler. And I can get warmer still if I add some yellow ochre to that now, to that same green. And I can go even warmer still, look how warm that becomes. So we go from the cools to the warms. Right through to then quite warm colours, where I start to even add some burnt sienna into the green. And we get a much, much warmer green still, almost into a brown. So that's the way we can leave the eye down and through, and the distant mountains as well are much hazier and much cooler. And the same with the warm colours that are in this. The warmer colours here will be more purpley, bluer, and they'll be much browner and orange here. 
going to put a larger brush and let's make a start on the actual painting. So I'm going to start with just blocking in some backgrounds down here for my with my um, turquoise as I was saying earlier on. Just want to get the, the basic base coats down of these, of these very light colours way behind down here. And whatever we have here is going to glow through and I can use my paint as it's acrylic so it's on watercolour paper. I can use it both thickly and thinly if I wish to I can make that a thin wash. Now remember you can do this with oils as well, you can glaze with oils. You can thin them down with the turps and a bit of linseed oil. You can actually glaze them onto a white surface or over, over other colours as they used to do in the um, Venetian days when they would have a grey background painted up all in the tones of grey first of all and then um, work the primary colours over those greys to give it uh, a mixture of tones and gradually work up our glazes. For instance, if we wanted orange, we put yellow on first, then we'd add red glazes over it and it would make orange. Now, in this case, I've put a glaze on there just to get me started, but I want to go slightly heavier in colour, so I'll take a little bit of lemon yellow now into that, and we'll just start to warm this colour up. It's a little bit thicker now, and to build it up with these cool colours in the background. You can see how thin it is, this paint, because you can see the dark colour I put on there earlier. So I'm just going to put a bit of warmth into that cool. We've already got a cool base on it, and that's reflecting down into the water here. And we're going to go up to the warmer colours behind, that comes right up through here. A bit more of that turquoise again up through here. So this is a combined technique of fat over lean. So if we're using oil paint this way, we're painting on very thinly, it would soak into the board or the canvas, and then we would paint this heavier paint over the top afterwards. So this is the thin paint and then the fat over the lean. And I'm using a cool yellow, which is lemon yellow with this green, to give my background. So lemon yellow with a turquoise to get this lovely background effect back here, right through. And that behind the mousse here. Use it a bit thinner for the, for, for the lean again. And we'll come down around these plants here, reflecting right down into, into the water, all the way through here, down into there. I'm going to get the mountains here coming above there in a moment. Now, before I put any more thicker paint on, heavier paint on, and dark and light, this will just work a little bit, take some uh, ultramarine blue into that, and a wee touch of yellow ochre, just to give me a, a little bit warmer tint of that into these trees behind here. And it's still quite soft, right the way down and along this edge. The paint around the camera tripod so you can see. So that's a fairly warm colour, but it's got a lot of cool in it. It's got the blue, ultramarine blue in it. I can just give that some texture with the tip of the brush. I'm using filbert brushes, so that means I can use a brush flat that way or thin this way to get my textures of these trees and paint in between them as well. And make my marks about, like a watercolour here, about the uh, things I'm painting. So I'm painting marks that are about the shadows in between the trees here. So I'm letting the trees, like a watercolour, the light colour stand out for the minute. So I'm putting on my lean colours just building up here a little bit warmer with the blue and the yellow ochre. You get the feeling of these distant trees texturing, little dots and dashes into them to feel the shadows in the trees and it's quite light paint, it's not very dark yet. I've been saving my darks for closer up. We want to go warm, cooler, cooler, cooler and we also want to go from the stronger tones here, a much darker, stronger details here, to much paler, softer in the background. And we bring some of that into the water. Do my, horiz my verticals first in, in clear water. Water like this, I want to do these verticals first. So I'll take that same colour. This is the ultramarine blue. Thinly at the moment, I'm using my fat over my lean. I'll bring this all the way down here. Into here. Just blending it in with these trees at the top here so we feel them. These are my verticals first. Feeling the depth of the water so I can adjust that a little bit more ultramarine, make a bit bluer. I can adjust that to however blue I want. I can just drop that in like a watercolour look into this. I can do this with the, with the, with the oils just the same way. And look at this variation, this lovely variation I get now of the feeling of water starting to happen here. I want to go a bit warmer as it comes down for these mountains and trees in the background. So I'm going to add a bit more yellow ochre into that. 
and you see how much warmer that goes. I want it too warm, so take it back a bit. Right down, these are going to be the trees coming behind here in just a moment. Right down there. And that's actually a moose in the water down here, so I mustn't forget. Got that warmth coming down there. You see it's flooding out onto this watercolour paper. <laughs> you can actually paint oils onto watercolour paper too like this if you wish to. There's nothing to stop you from using the terps and painting onto watercolour paper, not just board or canvas. You can use this same technique and then build the oils up on top, but I prefer to do it with acrylics. So a little bit more of the ultramarine again. Bring that in slightly stronger now here. And it's going to come right the way down. And then it comes back into the greens a bit more again. So I'm going to come back to my uh, cerulean and a wee touch of the ultramarine. Still quite thin. And bring that right down through and around down to the Finally down here to the, uh, the moose was around here, yeah, the, the moose was there somewhere, I've lost him a bit but don't worry, we'll bring him back in a minute. Well that comes right the way down there and into this. Now, we've lost Mr. Moose, we're painting in the house, so I suppose it's a hoose moose in the Scottish accent, a house mouse, a hoose moose. Silly person aren't I, I like a few more times though, you might not find it very any good humour, it's at least something on this miserable day. Now I've got my verticals and I want to start bringing my horizontals across to get the feeling of water here. So now I'm going to start bringing little pieces of the reflections of the water across these. So we've got our verticals, now we've got the horizontals to go in. I was only showing this the other day to somebody, I must lift out there, look I can, look up the watercolour, but still wet here, I can almost lift out those colours. So interesting paper this. I say it's a watercolour card. In here it's quite heavy stuff. It's about a quarter inch thick. It's uh, rather fun. Don't have to stretch it then, of course. But you can use it for acrylics and you could even use it for oils too if you wanted. So there we go with that down to there. Let's put a little bit more ultramarine in to make it a bit darker. So I'm using very thin paint, so I'm using layers, which again you could do as I say with the. Let's bring these little horizontal strokes across here, feeling my. Reflections of these trees coming down here, and a little bit darker going on behind here in places. Got the feeling of the water there, we've got the feeling of the water now. And just be working its way down into here. There we go. Now I want to put the warmer colours in behind here, so back to my yellow ochre again into the same mix, and we'll start to get some of these warmer trees behind here, right up here. And again, straight away I want to paint the trees in the sort of marks I'm going to want. And I'm painting these trees in before I, I put the whole background in here, just, just because I'm working up these layers. And I'm going to want to go fat over lean soon to get some of the light. At the moment I'm just painting it like a watercolour. And I'm going to bring some of those browns into these trees, right up to Mr Moose here. This is very light painting watercolour at the moment, but I'm using thin technique. I'm going to show you these different ways of working. Quite warm there, and the way that these trees come up here behind. I'm going to have much lighter behind you in a minute, and of course I can put the light over the dark being acrylic, so I've got the best of both worlds here. I can bring these warms down and amongst the trees, whenever I want, just to link the two together. It is not separate, that's the point my friend. We don't have separate colours that one links into another. We've got one thing happening is we've got that colour into here, look. One colour coming into another here. And as I do that, bring it right down. All the way down, right up to this, they're coming in behind here as well, these trees. The muddy, mucky, it's a, a, a yellow ochre and a bit of ultramarine mix. A bit more warmth into that shortly as well. Bring that right through here. Take a little bit of burnt sienna now into it, just to warm it up a bit. I put lighter and warmer colours in later, this is just they're a bit dead at the moment. You can make lighter colours with white to go over the top of this, so you could almost be following this with the watercolour, couldn't you? You could be doing the same sort of thing with the, with the watercolour when I'm doing this, wouldn't we? A bit of warmth going on down in the bank there, a bit more happening into the water here. And then some darker tones, so we'll take the ultramarine again. The ultramarine and the burnt sienna. Just a little bit of it, not too much. 
to make a much darker colour back here, even though it's still going to be softer than closer to us. And we'll start to bring up this these warmer darks back here. Don't want them too warm yet because we want to save that for the foreground. So I'm going to put a little bit more of that deep turquoise amongst it just to give it a bit more greenness. Going to have much much darker in there in a moment. Now as I was saying I can come lighter into this whenever I want and I can come dark whenever I want. That's the beauty of acrylics. Just going to let it dry off a little bit now though. And I'm going to put some fat on leaves. You see I'm painting this deeper turquoise now dropping it into this, this lighter colour, this thinner colour, giving much stronger pale greens back here. So this is more the fat over the lean or dropping heavier paint as watercolour into the fatter paint. And again I want that happening down the bottom here so I'm going to take some of that turquoise and just work that in here as well amongst these. I can put lighter on later, I can make white with this and I can put it over here later, don't, know, don't worry. Right, that looks fairly strong at the moment because it's against the light, but it isn't going to be. Take a larger brush, going up to a half inch now, and let's whack in some of this background colour here. It's a lovely lemon yellow, lovely lemon yellow uh, green. So I'll take some lemon yellow and the wee touch of that turquoise bit of white. Again I want a fairly thin wash to start with. And I'm going to make a mid-tone first of all, so I'm going to add just a little warmth, a little bit of um, ivory to this. So we've got lemon yellow and the turquoise. Could use serrally if you don't have turquoise, you don't worry. A little bit bluer, a little bit blue in the background, bring that light colour over it. Again, I want thin paint at the moment, so you can use your turps and your oil to paint this thinly, or you can use heavy acrylic, it's up to you, it doesn't really matter. You can use heavier acrylic and then put even fatter over the top, or you can just stick with this very light wash, as I'm doing at the moment. But look how cool that is. It's a cool yellow being lemon yellow. That's the point from what I'm trying to make to straight away. We're using the cool ends of the colours that we're using, the yellows and the browns and so on, to make our background colours. And we're using the warmer colours later on to make the foreground much stronger, warmer colours. And a lovely effect. And I can take that light colour and I can come back. This is the same amount of acrylics. We can come back down to here. And with a lighter colour we can paint those in slightly thicker or as a glaze over the top of this. Especially where the mousse is going to be there. So I'm going to just put a few more of these highlights using the tip of the brush and the edge of the brush now. This is again the beauty of the filberts. We can bring that light colour right the way through like this here. That has given us plenty of light. Going back up here behind these into the distance here. There's a variation of warms and cools. So I'm adding a bit more yellow now into this background, like right here to get the sunlight happening. It's still a cool yellow, it's not a warm yellow. It's the lemon yellow still, so it's lovely and cool. Quite a quick way of painting fat over lean in oil, acrylics or oils, or very similar to watercolour in a way. So this would, could be used for watercolour in the same way I've done it, or it can be used for oils or acrylics. Fat over lean paint. Coming on with these colours and up into the background there, I'm going to take some of that deep um, turquoise and we're going to start working in some of the shadows just a little bit now up here. The way that these shadows come down here. And I'm going to take a little bit of cerulean with this turquoise in just a moment and make this much cooler as it comes down into the shadows of the mountains here. That tree's going to go over the top. Soften that in a bit. Again, I keep saying it, but we, we are we're so free to paint in this way because it's um, we're using two techniques. We're using the techniques for watercolour and we're using the techniques of both oils and acrylics. So it's a, it's a combined technique I'm giving you today. I'm going to take a bit of cerulean, which is a much warmer blue, much warmer than the turquoise anyway. It's not a much warmer blue in, in, in fact. It's it's warmer than the turquoise, and I'm going to make this stronger, a little bit stronger, thicker paint into here. 
And I'm just going to work this turquoise now up into the background here. Now, if I just soften those edges, again I can come back with my lights afterwards. I haven't lost anything if I make a mistake. I can come back in whenever I want. I can soften those edges there. Coming up into here, little bits of mark on the hillside I can make with my brush. There's little dimples in the, in, in the um, side of the hill. Those greens are coming up in between these trees. We're going to have a lot more blue going on. So blues amongst these trees. A lot more blue going on than you might think, even amongst these trees here. Green behind. So again, a bit of ultramarine blue as we had before, and a little bit of yellow ochre just to make it a bit greener. And let's look at these darker trees coming up behind here. You see a much, much thicker paint now into that thinner paint. Same mix, but it's a bit thicker. Just want to get some of these, these warmer darks in here. It's a bit warmer still, a little touch of burnt sienna because I'm going to start putting some much, much deeper warms up into here. This has burnt sienna in it now, you see how much warmer it is and how I'm gradually bringing my warmer colours up and through into this. Could have done the whole background first if you want. Let the background just glow through there. Right, now here it's a much, much warmer green as it comes closer to us. So I'm going to take some sap green now and just give it a base coat of that. We could make the same green, we could use the chrome yellow and um, cobalt to give us this green if we wanted. I'd like to drag those outward sideways, Look, just twisting the brush like that we can drag out these feelings of a fir tree. So you see how we can put the warms against cools, gradually building this up to get the feeling of all of these pine forests behind. A bit more yellow ochre into that to make it warmer still. So I'm going to take some pure yellow ochre and just add it into that same colour and look how much warmer that is as it comes in here. Onto the edges. It's going to be much, much warmer around him shortly. I'm just going to take some pure yellow ochre now and just add pure yellow ochre around the moose down here before I start putting in all of my warmer oranges and textures shortly. Because I'm going to get some much stronger yellows and oranges going down here. Leaving rough edges here. With this I can go light over dark, dark over light, so any time I want I can come back into here and put lighter colour over the top. Go back to those mountains. Now with the mountains I'm going to just get some of the cobalt. This is a, a normal cobalt now. This is not a light uh, cerulean cobalt mix, which is much, much stronger. Yeah, here we are, some lovely cobalt blue there coming into there now. For these shadows amongst the snow up here. I'm going to put the lighter snow in later, so there's no worry about that. I've got these lovely blues, quite strong back here, so that that um, is going to shine out. Right into the trees, remember, bring those blues through again. We can paint one over the other, same with watercolour, we can bring one into the other to get the feeling of these. Back to the mountains again, we want to use a darker blue. I'm going to take this time a little bit of the ultramarine and a wee touch of the burnt sienna. Not too much to make a deeper purple. Working its way down through. If you had watercolour, you could be doing a bit of wet into wet into this now. It could be quite fun. Mm -hmm. I could work it all up. There's so many ways you could do this painting. I could have worked the whole painting up first in lights and then gone into my darks. I decided to go this way so that I can show you the whole thing building warm to the cool. Now the moose, let's give a background colour to that. He could do with a coat of that yellow ochre as well. But that's the inner now. And I can just work that into him. You can see now immediately how much warmer that is. You see against that light, that really shows you how when we use the warms, they're going to really show out. Now that makes that so cool behind. And look at the huge difference between this warm and those cools in the background now. I mean, it's 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 a huge jump. See all these colours behind here and the link. The ends of this bracket, the tip of the brush, just flicking it in. This is what you're not getting with the texture. And into that mousse there's going to be reflected green, so I'm going to take a little bit of that sap green and link that into the mousse. It's got green going on in This is what I was saying to you about one colour coming to another. To lose some of these whites here. That's it. Back again now, let's go back to the sky. I start getting our washes in for the sky. So you see we've got basic tones to lose the white. Let's look at this lovely sky. I'm going to start with a very light turquoise for the sky all over. I'm going to plaster the paint on in this case. could do it thin, these aren't watercolour, but I'm not going to. I'm going to take some quite heavy turquoise. 
There's this lovely sky behind there. Take a little bit of um, very light pink now. And I'll start to add some of that into the clouds up here in the sky. Just start to work that over and in. So we're just blending this in if you like. There's some lovely clouds up here, we'll give it a feeling of light. So this warm now is going to play against that cool down there look. Already it's happening. So very, very light pink. You could make this with magenta and lemon yellow and a little bit of white. Just put a wash over that first one. We're going to have a dark tree later but just to lose the light of it. Okay. A bit of glow going on. You can see the nice mountains coming on here now. Just going to soften some of those edges. You could do this again with turps and oils, or you could just blend it with your fingers with the oils. I want it just a little warmer though, just a wee touch. So I'm going to take a small touch of a deeper um, magenta and just tint in a little touch of that warm. They're going to be lost when I do much stronger colours shortly. Again, if I've got it there, I want to bring it down into these trees here. Now, how about the clouds themselves? A little more light in clouds. I'm going to take a bit of um, white and yellow ochre first of all. So, white and the tiniest touch of yellow ochre into it. Don't need much. It's a warm cream we're going to make with this. So, white, the tiniest touch of yellow ochre in. And we'll just start to bring out these clouds as they come across the top here, the mountains. Now we can do this with our finger and just blend it with oils or with the tip of the brush. I'm going to use my finger in this time just to get these smooth, softer effects, just gently up and over the top here of these mountain tops, giving us a medium cool light in the background. Now I'm going to use white and a wee touch of lemon yellow, which is only the tiniest touch is required. Only the tiniest touch of the lemon yellow. Just to give it a much lighter tint. So this is white with a touch of lemon yellow, not the yellow ochre. We can just find the tops of these clouds hardly blending at all. Just a bit. Just the edge of the brush. I'm using with the fill, but now I'm using the flat of the brush. Now, white into that again, and this is a much whiter mix. It's only just off white. And let's look at where these snow bits are on the mountains here. So this is almost pure white, but just a little bit off. And we'll just bring out the tips of these little bits of light shining on the mountain before we come back with some very light blues into there again. Which we can do, you see, with acrylic. Right down here through the mountain top. So these little bits of snow work. I can go right up here and across the top of this mountain here into there. Right across there. A little bit of snow on the top there. Coming around there. Look at the distance we're getting there now. Eh? Now with that, the tiniest touch of the very, very light turquoise because I want to bring in some shadows here. So this is a very, very light blue turquoise into these shadows. There we are. Leave that. Let's go on. You can put those highlights in at the end if you want. I'm just showing you the different ways we can use light against dark, warm against cool, rough against smooth, thin paint and fat paint over the top. Again, it could be watercolour this, it could be an oil, it can be an acrylic. We can build up this way. Right, on we go then to the stronger trees. You want much, much stronger trees happening here. Now what a really, really dark tree coming down here. So I'm going to go to my deepest blue now. I'm going to go to my Prussian blue, which will give me almost a, a black. Prussian blue, a wee bit of deep sap green. And look how dark we can go here. We've got to get rid of all of this quickly. Again, I want to lose and you'll begin to see how this is working with the with the, the dark shadows and the warm and the cools. You'll just begin to see it now the same way in just a moment. And this seems dark at the moment, but I'm going to be able to go even darker than this. 
So the more I lose this white, the bit more it's going to make sense. We'll cool down in there. I'm using more, you see I'm using more of the Prussian blue down here in the cool shadows. And how that changes up into here. Get rid of all of this snow white, we don't want any of this, this white at the moment, we want to lose all of that. Same with the canvas, we want to lose all of any, any, any white at the moment. You can use the dry brush technique looks like. You see I'm getting texture now by dragging heavier, drier paint over the surface here to get the feel of these pine, pine, pine needles coming up. So dry brush across the surface there. You need more texture in your painting. It's one of the things that uh, I noticed. And we can start to make our marks now not just about the fir tree but about grasses. So I can start to bring these marks, flatten my brush out the tip of the brush to start to bring some grassy marks surface about the grasses. Now you can start to see the tones of our picture. So here now we need to get this light against dark here. Go a bit warmer, take some burnt sienna in with that green mix and let's look now at the warmer colours that are going to go on amongst this, these pine trees, to bring it forward, start to bring them forward Put some more cools back in there in a minute. To make these warm seem warmer, I need to put more cools amongst them. So if we put um, red next to green, the green looks brighter and the red looks brighter. We have you know, both working against or with each other. They're called complementary colours. One colour will complement or bring out another. See how I'm bringing one glaze of colour over another to unite and link them together. Right, so there's our base coats. Now we can start to really look at some details. Let's look at the Mr. Noose here a little bit. Let's get a little bit of his dark antlers in. They're very warm against there. I'm going to take a smaller brush and just work a bit of um, burnt sienna directly into that. So it's really very warm just under his antler here. So we've got the green going on. This is the warm that you wanted. So you have a lot of browns in your picture. Um, and I'm going to be doing that short there. Again, that's something we can do when we've got acrylics. We can change things as we want and make them lighter somewhere else later. And let's start to look at some of the detail of the grasses and the mosses and things coming here. Tip of my brush is going to drag down in little light lines. He's a part of the picture. We don't want him, say, standing out like a sore thumb. He's blending into the background and we'll bring out this more so that he stands out with lighter colours in a minute. Now we can start building up the lights as well. We've done the darks, we've got a lot of those in. We can go darker yet. We want that smooth to stand out. We're not going to keep painting him darker. We'll come in and we'll paint him lighter around here to bring him out. And suddenly the thing starts to come to life. This is where we can use the acrylics now, which you can't do with the watercolours unless we use gouache to bring out the, the lighter colours, the way of mixing um, warms and cools to make your distance and to do a lot more shadow and also we're going to deal with texture shot here, I haven't got to that yet. Now I can come back and start to look at the highlights on the branches because I've got the darks underneath I can uh, Put the light colours on top so that the darks underneath show out. And the blues on them too, we're going to find in a minute. We've just it's just the warmer green, but if I put some blue back into here, we're going to get a lovely effect of um, the cool shadows as well. And how much stronger these are than the ones behind here. So I'm going to bring these darks out, making those look a bit closer. The other one, compared to this, you begin to see that stands out much more the original of the uh, students, but we've got to place that against. I to bring this out more yet. Now those purple start to come into the darks around here. Because we've got this cooler light here, we want the warmer now as well. Now he's disappearing into the light at the moment, so we've got to bring him out. We need to use the light colours to do that. And I've got to make sure that this is working down here as well. So 
I'm going to make this cooler shortly as well. I need to really build up these tones now. Just to get the feeling of Mr. Moose. We've got those lights there. Lighter still. This is where the oil painting technique or the acrylics comes in now. We've lost from watercolour unless we're going to be using gouache or some um, more opaque paint. And now we're painting by highlights, which is the way that I love to paint, as you know, because we're doing the last colouring, if you like. We're, um, we're painting with pure light. And in these layers, we've got cools coming across as well. So let's go back to our mid cerulean and just enhance this by bringing the cools out a bit. This is the cerulean and now I'm bringing in some ultramarine to really pull out these beautiful distant blues, mountain blues on this. I'm going to look at this heather and the texture in there. I'm going to use a sponge on that and some, some brush work to say that it can be done with a brush as well. Now, picking out the, the beast a bit more, take some of my very light blue and we'll just have very light turquoise, we'll just see if we can start to find some of the cooler colours. Because we've got a mixture of the different beasts that we're trying to, I'm trying to paint for them. It's quite difficult to find, I guess, the right even grasses. Make little marks like this we can start to bring the effect of grasses in. You really need to go further with these textures is, is my advice for your painting. Because you're getting lumps and blobs but you're not getting form or shape or texture or light and dark against light and dark yet. And that really is vital in a bit of painting I think is to really enjoy. I think you'll enjoy much more as well the colours and the lights and darks if you start. And we're just starting to work up these Brighter sunlit colours now. So that would make more sense. So let's let's really get onto that. And I want to go onto a sponge now. Right, I've got three sponges there we'll try out. And I shall mix up some paint and then dip these sponges in. I'm going to work from my darkest colours of the um, heather and bracken to my lightest. So I'm going to start with a yellow ochre and a little touch of, of uh, cadmium yellow and white just to get the deeper colour started. Even a little bit of orange. And a very dark, rich colour. And let's see what we can do with these sponges for that. Now the idea of a sponge is that you, you don't repeat it, that you put it on by like this, gradually twisting it and adding it. And look at these lovely textures we can get into the foreground here, which are going to come right round. Now you can do this with a brush, with a rough stippling brush. Different brushes, different textures. You can even use bits of um, plastic um, scouring pad, all sorts of things you can, you can do to get these different textures and ways of working. And different sponges, of course, of course will give different textures. So I'm going to put some white into that now. I don't want to do too much, it could be penny a yard if you start doing that, but to get the feeling of this heather in the background, we're not going to get it without very carefully doing some fine texture like this. I think I might just catch it coming through here. It doesn't matter if you go over your beast a little bit, because you can come back and put more in. Maybe up in the trees a fraction too. Down here, so there we go. Now, not only lights, but we want to put some darks in in the same way. So it'd be wise to go and wash the sponge. And I want some really bright reds because of the um, the heather. So let's see what we can do with that. Pinky reds to really bring this forward. Because if we do that, we might need some some lighter greens going on amongst these textures as well. So I'll have to wash the sponge again. Let's go to our creams and greens now to really bring a bit of sunlight out in this foreground. We're going to come back to our brushwork then. 
and let the sun just shine through behind here, right up and round him, up through into there, even onto some of these grasses and things here. Remember we can drag the sponge as well to get the effects of grasses too, look. So if I want to get the effects of grasses a bit, I can drag that sponge a little bit to start to get the effect of grasses happening in places like that. Right, now I need to come back with my brush and start to put back in my details with the... But you see now about the texturing. You're painting very large blocks of colour, which is fine, but you haven't got any of this texturing, which is really needed. Okay, now back with the brushes, and we need to start working up the lights and darks with the brushes again. So grass and stuff. In fact, I want a much finer brush now. Come down. I even start need to start. I may even need to start using my mouth and my words. A small round brush, but we'll start off with a little throw at first, and just see what we can manage. And it's these textures for helping to give us more space as well, isn't it? Different blues and greens I'm going to bring in in leaf shapes now amongst this as a foil against this roughness because you don't want too much of it. Which so is a part of the picture and not separated out. I've got a very dark mousse because the mousses that I'm painting from here are very dark. Um, but if you want a lighter mousse, that of course is your prerogative. Back up to the tops of the trees, maybe we need a bit more up there. So I'm going to take some very light green again and just see where the light's shining through here onto these. We'll just have a bit of the light coming onto the edge of these trees. So it's your picture the same with the same sort of colours going on but um, I've used a lot more texture because now I can put fat onto lean. I've got the fat onto dry even. I've got my undercoat done here and it's just a matter of painting heavier paint on now where I want lighter colours, isn't it? There we are, and we're about done there, you know. For this particular picture, just to give you an idea, a little bit darker in some places just to make it a bit more solid perhaps, or bring up the lights behind there a bit more even, let's do just that. That's it really, that's all I wanted to show you. I just wanted to show you this um, light and dark, warm and cool distance, how one colour comes into another rather than being, being flat blocks and looking at the way marks come across trees as well as um, across the branches and down vertically, horizontally, all over, not just one way. If you want your moose warmer, you can have him warmer. But I, I'm just going by what's on these pictures. It's not quite as... Maybe I'll go a tad warmer. And, uh, is it happening up in the trees a bit as well? Is there some of the reds coming into the trees to link from the sunlight? I could still go light in places. I could come light into the sky. Let's put, that, put back a little bit with the sky there and just put a bit more cream into the sky. A little bit more light happening just in the sky up here, just a, just a bit more clouds. Don't want to fight against the um, there we go then, the fun. Just to add on to the techniques you've got, the use of textures rather than um, just blocks of colour and the recession of warms to cools as well from the strongest here back through. Having said that, let's make these warms in the foreground a little bit warmer still before I finish. We'll take some alizarin crimson and just come into these a bit. There my friends, that might just give you a few tips from other things that I've picked up to help with your paintings in the future. That's our wee session for today then. That's sort of coat of varnish now, it's also gives it more depth. Mm -hmm. 